Jacob, we're going for a drive. 2002 Renault Sport Clio. V6 phase one rolling start. <laughs> horsepower and torque. 230 horsepower, 221 pound feet of torque from a three liter V6 mounted right behind us. And big shout out to Obi Prestige for hooking us up with this Renault Clio Sport V6. Yeah, they're located in Gatineau, Quebec, and they specialize in hypercars, exotics, and all types of rare and unique vehicles. So make sure you watch our Ferrari F12 review. Yes, and let us know in the comments below what other cars of theirs should we review. Yeah, they got a lot that I would like to drive. <laughs> <laughs> so what the heck is this and why do we have it? Well, Renault is a French company and this car was never officially sold in Canada, so this was imported to Canada. And there was only about 1,500 of them built worldwide because this is the phase one, so that was 2001 to 2002. And apparently this one was brought directly to Canada for the Canadian Grand Prix, and that's why we got this cool Formula One Renault livery stickers on it. Yes, we can't verify that, but that's what we were told. So I think it looks really cool with these decals. All right, and then the engine is in the back. Yeah, so this is actually based on a front engine, front wheel drive, five seater, and converted to mid engine, rear wheel drive, two seater. So yes, the engine is right there. Yeah, the uh, normal Clio kind of looks like a crappy car, but this is super awesome. And to put this into North American perspective, that's like taking a Ford Fiesta or a Ford Focus and doing the same thing to it because this is essentially just an economy car. And it's pretty quick. And we do have a titanium exhaust on here, but that's the only thing that's different about this. Yeah, that's the only modification, but it does look cool with those titanium pipes. So we should probably start with the looks. I was gonna say exhaust. And for all you commenters over the years who want us to drive old cars and cool cars, we hit a million, we finally did it. Finally, you guys can subscribe to us. This car isn't even available in North America and we did it. <laughs> so starting with the front end, it's very Euro, not something we got here in North America, but it's wide bodied out. Yeah, the wide body looks amazing. It's all squared off. It looks incredible. It also does look super awkward. And then the front wheels and the back wheels aren't that thick. So it kind of looks a little skinny in there. Yeah, and then the headlights are like very normal, but they are projectors, which is nice. And it still looks very Euro. And we've got real grills and fake grills. I think this is the oldest fake grill we've reviewed at 2002. Yeah, interesting. So this is a Renault Sport. So that's kind of like Ford Performance, sort of. Yeah. I'm trying to relate this to all North American stuff. And if we pop the hood to see where the engine would be, we just have parts. They didn't do anything special to clean it up. Yeah, so some of the original stuff from the regular Clio is still all mounted up there, which is pretty funny to see. And then moving on to the side view, it's a hatchback, so that looks cool, but we've got a gigantic wing. Yeah, and this is wide body AF, and you can see the side intakes, and they look so cool, and you can hear them from the side when you have the door open. It's just like a just like a sucking sound. And if you open the door, you're gonna see a huge side sill because it's all wide bodied out. It looks like it's just tacked on. Yeah, which is crazy because like you can actually see the original metal body and then almost like the glue seal to the wide body, but it looks so good. It's a very cool looking factory wide body. And then what do you think of these stickers on it? I actually don't mind it at all. It looks, like, it looks very 2002 computer Windows PC kind it, of stuff. It's very appropriate for this. And what do you think of these wheels? I absolutely love these multi-spoke wheels. I think they're one of my favorite rally style wheels. Yeah, kind of like the Alpina. Yeah, they're like <laughs> OZ kind of style. Like they look really good. And they fit really well. And what would be the Continental recommended tire if you had a 2002 Renault Clio Sport V6? Uh, close enough, Extreme Contact Sport. And then moving on to the back end, we got one thick ass boy. Yeah, yeah, we really do. The taillights <laughs> kind of suck, but the exhaust looks amazing. Yeah, it's pretty cool coming out of there. It couldn't get more real than it is. And it's just like so wide and awkward looking to the point where it's kind of ugly but I do really like my ugly car, so I think it's perfect. And then from like the rear three quarter, you can see the way the body line comes all the way across and blends into the bumper. It's, it's the coolest looking rear wheel drive, mid engine hatchback. Yeah, this is one of my favorite looking cars. It's so dumb, but it's so perfect. And then you were also pointing out that Volkswagen 
made something like this as well. Yeah, so the only other example that I could think of that's something related to this, which is like a hot hatchback with a mid-engine, is the Volkswagen W12 concept. So they never actually sold it to the public, whereas this was sold to the public. That had a Bentley twin turbo W12 shoved in the back, and it was amazing, and I wish they made it, but this is the only thing that you can actually buy like this. And then I guess the Hyundai Veloster is gonna have a similar version as well. Yeah, I guess that's the only other concept right now. I just want to say whoever actually got this thing approved at Renault like whoever was drunk at the time in accounting or whatever like was passed out when they got this approved I love you for great, it great job yes do more of this please and because this is a European car we have these really weird side mirrors that warp everything and a weird rear view mirror it's pretty much a full-out nightmare it's like driving with three GoPros <laughs> yeah and what's cool is our reading light up here like airplane style. Yes, it really is. And before you drive, we got to do a little send into cliche Quebec corner. Yeah, shout out Quebec for your corners. Yuri, how's that <laughs> turning? I mean, you got to do a lot of steering wheel inputs, but I'm used to that because I do have an old car as well. Yeah, it's not like it's heavy to actually do it. It's just a lot of turning input. No, it's, it's super light and it feels nice and sporty. I it, don't really know how it's going to react if you give it too much power or try to oversteer it, and I'm not going to try right now. Yeah, because we did mention that this is a rear wheel drive, so all the weight is kind of behind us. Yeah, and when this came out, I'm sure it was the coolest idea ever, and people got to skid it and stuff and drive it on a track. We missed that boat because we were in grade 10. <laughs> but in the, in the future, maybe we'll get the Veloster to do that. Yeah, yeah, so we'll just be extra careful with this one. All right, your turn behind the wheel. Okay. How do you say launch control in French? Je ne sais quoi. That is the right amount of speed. This can do zero to 100 kilometers per hour in just over six seconds, which is pretty decent. Yeah, especially for 2002. Yeah. So I would like to start off by talking about all of the sounds in this cabin and outside. So there's everything from intake sucking to just general engine noises to also exhaust burbles. And then you get a lot of mechanicalness from the transmission and everything. Like it's 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 got a lot going on. Yeah, because this has a six-speed transaxle. Yeah. Transaxle. Oh, transaxle. Yeah. yeah. Like, listen to this. It's just, you can almost hear the fluids like boiling. It's, it's insane, like there's so much going on. And you can actually lift that cover and see the engine, but there's another little cover under there that we didn't want to lift because this is an old car. And what I really like about the exhaust sound is the burbles you get. Everything sounds so natural, like floor it. I'll downshift. Second. There we go. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's so good. Like, it's so authentic. And I think that may have something to do with that extra titanium exhaust we have. I doubt the factory one would burble like that. I, I don't like the titanium exhaust. It's too loud in here. I can't hear anything. I love it, obviously. And I would love it a lot more stock, but this does sound great, especially from outside. And it's so crazy to have a V6 behind us. Like, that's the biggest engine that they had in their arsenal, basically because Renault is owned by a bunch of companies. It's like a conglomerate, kind of like Volkswagen. And so this is the biggest engine that they could fit in here because they already had like a tuned up front engine Renault Sport Clio, but this, it just wasn't enough. They had to do this. Not the V6. You know how I love my V6 sub 260 horsepower transaxle cars. Yes, yes, I know, Yuri. So the overall driving experience is incredible. It feels like a normal car. The shifter is so light. The clutch is super light. Well, the clutch is kind of a pain because you, when you slide your foot back, you didn't have your foot all the way off the ground or else it kind of like gets your foot stuck underneath it. You are right. I did get my foot stuck in the plastic above the clutch because the way that the clutch engages, it's almost kind of flat where more traditional clutches of 99% of other cars I've driven, they're kind of like on an angle more. So it's way less likely to happen. And then the shifter is a little weird. I feel like neutral is actually where I think first should end up, but I did get used to that pretty quick. And by that, you mean the actual position in relation to where the shifter is because you kind of have to bash your knuckles into the dash to hit third. Yeah, but it's not the end of the world. You get used to it right away. Yeah, it's just a little bit weird, but it's also, yeah, very normal. And then heel toe is also a little bit weird because of the pedal position. So you kind of just have to slide your foot over. It's definitely not my ideal. So I'm going to send it into Quebec cliche corner and man, just the right amount of power, the right amount of sound. The suspension is also incredible. I expected it to totally suck, but man, the damping is just right. It is a little bit stiffer, but it's kind of a sporty car. So that's exactly what I would expect. It's not like you get those like thuds. 
it's just nice and soft over bumps. And I feel like the stiffer suspension is canceled out a bit by these soft seats because they're like old school car seats that are yeah. very comfy. They really are. But this thing like has no real perceptible body roll. It's incredible. I think it has something to do with the wheelbase and the fact that this car is already so low to the ground. Like I love driving this. It's such a joy to actually just drive this thing. And even though this is rear wheel drive and the engine's right behind us, I feel like it kind of puts enough weight to the back but I feel like if I was to lose the rear end, I wouldn't be able to catch it because the wheelbase is so short. Hence why I'm not pushing it very hard today. The worst part about the overall driving experience has to be the driving position. I feel like I'm 40 feet in the air, but because of that, my visibility is yeah. impeccable. It feels like you're in a bus. Yes, exactly. <laughs> because the steering wheels also kind of angle like that, coupled with where the position of the shifter is. But the outside looks totally makes up for anything weird in here. Yes. And if you drive this thing in parking lots, the turning radius is absolutely terrible. You have to do like a 17 point turn to do a three point turn. Worth it. Definitely worth it. Okay, let's move on to the interior because this is a French interior, but it seems like a pretty normal car interior. Yeah, it just feels very 90s kind of 2000s era. Okay, some cool stuff. Stuff. We've got Alcantara on the shift boot, we've got Alcantara on the e-brake, and then we've got these cool screws around the shifter. Yeah, and everything's kind of painted silver, which looks like what people did to their cars in the 2000s when they painted them themselves. The steering wheel does feel very consumer car, but we have horns on the steering wheel and on the turnstock on the left. Push that in. Yeah. <laughs> so weird. And then we got a little CD deck here, which is also weirdly laid out, and we have controls for it behind the right side of the steering wheel attached to the column. Yeah, so you can't actually see them when you're driving. It's completely blocked by the steering wheel. So you have to like, you can only control it on turns or you have to know exactly where everything is. And then the gauge cluster is pretty basic, white with an orange needle in the middle. It's very legible, very easy to read. But the first thing that I noticed is that it goes 5, 10, 20, 30. It's, it's got an extra zero. Oh yeah, yeah, it's not one. Yeah, That's... because it goes 5 to 10 instead yeah. of like 500 to 1,000. France, you crazy. <laughs> okay, and then as for storage, there's a little net back here which helps you put your jacket. I don't think we could fit a box in there, can we? I don't know, let's find out with the box test. And if we wanted to drink a cup of Tim Hortons coffee in France, we have no cup holders here visible anywhere. No. This is not a cup holder either, but if we drop our glove box, we have two cup holders right there, <laughs> which, which does not fit a medium, and I would not suggest driving with a cup in But it kind holders. of holds it in place sort of that way because it is a medium, but no, that's a total fail. And before we do the visor test, downshift, downshift, one last pull. That sounds so good. It, it feels fast too. Yes, okay, visor test. Uh, let's do a careful one. This is an older car. Three, two, one. Ah, fail. Does not pass. Supercar pass? No. <laughs> I mean, it, it ticks a lot of the supercar boxes, but no. It kind of does. It is not a supercar. It does get a lot of attention. Like a lot. Super hatch. Yes. So I feel like that's pretty much it with the 2002 Renault Sport Clio V6. Phase one. Phase one. Let's get to the price. This one is currently for sale at OP Prestige, and if I don't buy it, the price is $69,995. Canadian. Which is incredible, and I actually legitimately want to buy this so hard. This is now a dream car. I've always liked this car, but being able to drive it, it lives up to every single expectation I had for it. Yeah, this is very cool. To be honest, this wasn't even on my radar at all. Like, I pretty much didn't even realize this thing existed, but I don't know if I would want this for that price. I totally get that. That's kind of a lot of money money for a rear wheel drive hatchback that's from France that was never sold here. Okay, but how would Americans, would you like, you can't have it. That's right. Import I'll sell lost. it to you guys for double the price whenever it's legal to import. We'll, we'll hold on to it. <laughs> so if you're interested in this car, make sure you check out OB Prestige located in Gatineau, Quebec. And if you're not interested in this car, they also have hypercars, supercars, very rare and unique cars. So make sure you watch our Ferrari F12 review. And follow them on Instagram too. Yes.